So, let's get going. In the quantitative reasoning subtest, you will have 40 seconds per question. You will likely feel under fairly relentless time pressure. Most of the time, you will not be writing anything down for later reference. For example, if the question asks, which artist sold the median number of CDs, there is nothing much to learn after you have identified the correct answer. However, in questions with a large table, there are often opportunities to keep a crucial piece of information for use later on. Our objectives over the next five minutes are to show you examples of key facts that you want to write down while tackling complex quantitative reasoning questions, and to demonstrate how jotting down these key facts can save you up to 30 seconds for the questions that will follow. Work out the answer to the next question, and while you do that, have a think whether there is any information you would like to keep for future questions. What percentage of region B is age 30 or under? How would you answer this and what information would you keep? You may already know how to quickly answer this specific question type. If not, watch the previous video on how to express one number as a percentage of another. To find the percentage of region B that is age 30 or under, you would refer to region B's row and add up the number of people who were aged 18 or under and the number of people who were aged 19 to 30. This would give you 31,383 plus 35,327, which equals 66,710. Then you would add up the entire row to get the total population of region B. 31,383 plus 35,327 plus 33,392 plus 29,271 plus 44,000 221, which equals 173,594. Now, to find a number as a percentage of another number, we divide that first number by the second. Here, to find the number of people aged 30 or under in region B as a percentage of the total population of region B, we divide those two numbers. 66,710 divided by 173,000 594 equals 0.384, or 38.4%. Don't forget, we multiply by 100 to convert a decimal into a percentage. But wait, do not lose that total for region B that you have found. Note it down somewhere. Totals are by far the best example of the type of information you will want to save. You will often find you need to know the total before working out a proportion or an average. You therefore need to note that total down on your whiteboard as it may be needed later on. Now practice the next question and let's find out if this total came in handy to save you some time. The population of region B is what percentage of the population of region C? How much easier is this question going to be because we jotted down the total population of region B? Instead of scrambling to recalculate the population of region B, and often making mistakes with the calculator in the rush, we can now calmly work out the total population of region C by adding each of its age categories, which gives us a total of 74,058. 173,594 is what percent of 74,058? Again, we simply divide the two numbers. 
If you're confused which way round you divide these numbers, it's always the number after the of or the than which comes second. The question asked, the population of region B is what percent of the population of region C? Region C came second after the of, and so its population goes second in the calculation. 173,594 divided by 74,058. This gives us 2.34. Multiply by 100 to make this a percentage, and the answer is 234%, the nearest whole number. So, what information should we look to keep when working with tables or graphs? Firstly, totals, which you will usually find whilst calculating averages or percentages. As well as this, volumes or areas, which often can be calculated from diagrams and tables, can be useful for answering numerous follow-up questions. Not much, is it? That's because you rarely have enough time to write much down during the UK CAT. Writing too much down costs precious time and is a bad habit for far too many students. But totals and volumes are the exception. They often take 30 seconds to calculate and you do not want to have to spend another 30 seconds to calculate them again. We hope you feel more aware now of which key facts are worth writing down and how this can save time. Along the way, we might have refreshed some of your percentage skills. As always, feel free to watch this video again if you need to recap anything we've covered or keep practicing with mock questions. Good luck. That concludes another UCAT lesson. If you like the strategies and content we're developing and want to see more free content, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any UCAT questions, leave us a comment below and we'll help you sort it out and get your preparation up to speed.